everybody, for long time viewers of this channel, you know that all of last season, I was doing match reviews for every match. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do this season, so I'm trying to play around with a few different ideas, but it's a lot to do two podcasts a week and a match review. So as I said, the ideas are still kind of fluctuating as to what I'm going to do this season. But for this one, I didn't want to leave you empty-handed. So before tomorrow's podcast, I want to give you five things that we learned from the 4 nothing win over Hymnastique in the first preseason friendly. Number one, nothing. I know it's a bit of a cop-out. We will have four other actual things that we learned. But for the first one, I want to remind people that even though a 16-year-old made his debut, even though we did see a hat trick from Ray Minaj, there's not much to actually take from a preseason friendly where most players are just getting back, not even their fitness, but they're getting back to training. They're getting back to being in that team atmosphere again. And it's a chance for a lot of these B players and even Juvenile A players to prove themselves and get some playing time with the B team and maybe even push into the first team. But the big takeaway was actually from the 2,000 fans who were able to watch this match at the Johan Cruyff Stadium, which is more fans than we've seen for over a year and a half of football getting to actually watch FC Barcelona. So I think that was actually the most exciting part of it. Number two is that with the lineups that we saw, Barcelona are going to use Ricky Puig to orchestrate this attack. Now online, obviously, as expected from the last now season and a half, everybody seemed to have an opinion about Ricky Puig, and you either have to be with him or you're an absolute hater, and there is no middle ground. And that's frustrating because we saw just 45 minutes of him. He was a little sloppy at times, sure, but most of the good things that happened for Barcelona in that first half came off the foot of Ricky Puj, whether it was finding Sergio Roberto in behind, whether it was getting in behind himself with a ball coming over the top from Demir. I thought Ricky Puj was pretty much ever on the field. And if him and that are going to sit back like that, it should be expected that Ricky Puj is going to have the lion's share of possession and everything is going to be dictated through him. That is by design, as Barcelona is going to tell you tomorrow. Number three, Yusuf Demir. Don't overhype him, but that left foot is as good as advertised. The 18-year-old, he was the player to watch. He was the one that everybody really did want to see because he is, more than any other of the B-team players, the one that with that loan to buy 10 million euros at the end of the year, it seems like it's going to be good value for Barcelona if he's as good as he even was for those 45 minutes. I don't want to overhype him because he was getting a free role that he won't have if he's ever playing alongside Lionel Messi. But he was cutting in on that left foot with Sergino Des overlapping. On the left wing, it was much more everybody stay at home. But it seems like Ronald Koeman and company and that coaching staff it gave him the keys to the castle and said, hey, if you want to do something, if you think you've got some good ideas, then let's see it. And we did. He kept cutting into the middle. He'd have those diagonal balls to Alejandro Balde. And I think he fit perfectly into what Barcelona might be wanting to do this year in a 4-3-3 formation. So for Demir... This is not, I think, the last time. Obviously, you'll see him for the rest of preseason. But I think there's a very good idea and a good notion that he will be around the first team dynamic and make at least a few appearances this season. And at this point, again, it's 45 minutes. But I think Barcelona has a very good idea whether or not they want to pay that 10 million euros by the end of next summer. Barca B is willing to give a chance to players that were actually out on loan for them and have returned to the club. Peke Polo has returned as a 20-year-old, having been on loan for the last two seasons, both in the third division. Last year, it was UD Poblenes, and then the year before, it was Olat with Arnaud Camas. Now, Arnaud Camas last year came back as a 20-year-old and became a starting center back for Barcelona B, when he was probably expected to be sold. But he had improved in his time at Olat, just as it looks like Peke Polo, at the age of 20, might have finally got to the point, and I know he only had three goals last season, but I think the coaching staff, at least for Sergi Barzwan, has seen enough to say, hey, he can play at the center forward spot, he can play the left wing, and if a guy we're about to talk about does wind up leaving Barca B, they're going to need to find goals from somebody, and he might be one of those options. Last but not least, five is the future of Ray Minaj. We learned that he's probably going to be able to get Barcelona at least a little bit of money. A hat trick in the preseason, coming off 14 goals for Barca B last year. He was a focal point, and he was a player that two years ago arrived at Barca B, basically being stuck between the second division and the third division in Spain, and a player that oftentimes looked like he belonged in the third division. But after a really good season last year in the, at the age of 23, now he's a 24-year-old who I think is still on the up in his career trajectory. And at other club, whether it's in the second division in Spain or even at the bottom of the Liga table, one of those teams, it'd be wise to have Ray Minaj on your bench. Again, he might only be getting better if you give him more opportunities and he becomes a focal point of the team as he did for Barca B. So Barca are continuing to try to move him. It looks like Portugal might be his destination. But now after a hat-trick in preseason, Barca might be able to reevaluate some of those offers.
So after those five things we learned, there's plenty of players I didn't talk about. I didn't talk about Balde, I didn't talk about Callado, and I didn't talk about 16-year-old Gabi, the first 2004-born player to make his debut for FC Barcelona's first team. And if you want more about those players and a much more comprehensive breakdown of this preseason friendly, we're going to have a podcast tomorrow. So make sure you come back here for that. I'll make sure to cut out the segment. And if you want the whole podcast, just put it in your ears wherever you get your podcasts. But in the meantime, I do want this YouTube channel to thrive again. We've had a little bit of a lull in the summertime and the end of last season when everybody was disappointed. But I'm excited for the new season to start. So make sure you give us a like, subscribe, and share this in those places. I can't do it alone, so share it wherever you watch videos and wherever other people and your friends might be watching videos to help grow this channel so I can make more content and it's a good use of my time. So I do appreciate all of you who are supporting the channel and have supported me throughout the good days and the bad days. And until next time, Forza Barca.